Welcome back to the EKD show. Now it's June, which means football is <laughs> right around the corner. You might not think it, but it's going to be here before you guys know it. So this summer, we're going to do some division previews and we're going to kick it off with the NFC East because you don't know, now you know. I'm a ginormous, ginormous Philadelphia Eagles fan. For better or for worse, I am loyal, but I will also be truthful and call them out at any point during this season. So we're going to take a look at the NFC East from a betting perspective. Now, before we look ahead in terms of the NFC East from a betting perspective, we have to look back. So the big moneymaker, at least for the division last season, was the Dallas Cowboys. They were the best team against the number 10 and 7 ATS, followed by the New York Giants and then Philly and Washington only covered six games last season. So Dallas does take the cake for the moneymaker award for the NFC East. They also went on to win the division with 12 and 5 record. And I say that <laughs> it's hard to get it out because the Eagles had it in the bag. They went 11 and six. They went one and six down the stretch with the post, including the postseason. So the Eagles had it right within reach. Dallas Cowboys, nonetheless, they were able to win the division. And then the Commanders, it was a tough season for them. They only had four wins and the New York Giants also struggled with six wins. Neither team made it out of um, the wild card in terms of the Eagles. They lost to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as a three point favorite. And then we saw the Dallas Cowboys, that was shocking. They lost to the Packers as a seven point favorite. So that's just a little look back little to last season it was not the best year for the nfc east but nonetheless it can only get better so let's get into a segment called better bet i'm going to give a prompt and i'm going to tell you guys which one that i like more so number one the eagles or the cowboys to win the division now when we think about the nfc east we think about teams don't necessarily repeat we don't see a lot of repeat champions we haven't seen it since the 2003 to 2004 season with the philadelphia eagles so who won last year the Dallas Cowboys. What have the Dallas Cowboys done this offseason? Not much. Meanwhile, the Philadelphia Eagles, we know they had a terrible end to their season, but I do believe the Eagles will go on to win this division. Of course, if everyone's able to stay healthy, even with the loss of Jason Kelsey and some of the movements that we've seen at offensive coordinator as well as defensive coordinator, I would bet the Philadelphia Eagles a plus 115 to win the division. Now, this was one of my best bets last year. And, you know, sometimes things fall apart. But I will say when the Eagles took a turn for the worst, it was really based on the scheduling as well. They had a brutal, brutal end of November into December. They played so many tough teams, so I wasn't surprised that they completely things went off the track. But at the same time, I do believe the Eagles will be able to do it because I don't see the Dallas Cowboys repeating in the NFC East. But Dallas is close behind at plus 130. All right, Giants were commanders to go over their win total of six and a half. Man, two bottom feeder teams. We're going to go with the Washington Commanders on this one. I think they could go over six and a half wins. Now it's a complete rebuild this year. New manager, a uh, new owner, I should say. New head coach, new offensive coordinator, new defensive coordinator. We're not even sure what's going to happen at quarterback. Jaden Daniels, of course, just got drafted number two from LSU. And there's high hopes for him, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen right away. Now, the NFC East as a whole doesn't have the most difficult schedule, but out of the two teams, I have no expectations for the New York Giants. I think they're going to be terrible. They're likely to go under six and a half wins. So instead, I will be looking at the Washington Commanders to maybe just surprise us, surprise us a little bit and hit over six and a half wins. Both their um, win totals, excuse me, are at six and a half. Meanwhile, for the Philadelphia Eagles and Dallas Cowboys, they're both at ten and a half. So keep that in mind. Now, there's also a bunch of player props that are available right now on ESPN Bet. You can deep dive into some of these markets, but if we look at the quarterbacks, you have Jalen Hurts at 21 and a half passing touchdowns or Dak Prescott at 29 and a half passing touchdowns. So between the two, for one of them to go over, I'm going to look at Jalen Hurts over 21 and a half passing touchdowns. Now he threw 23 touchdown passes last season. Prior to that, he threw 22 despite only playing in 15 games. Now we also know the Eagles, they like to run the ball, but this also comes down to the brotherly shove, the tush push, something that was very beneficial for this squad. And because Jason Kelsey is no longer there, I'm a little concerned about that. And I think they're going to have to throw the ball a lot more because the tush push, I mean, 11 touchdowns, 35 first downs on 32 such attempts for the Eagles, which was the most in the NFL. They really relied on this to get down the field and they're not really going to have this without Jason Kelsey. So I do think Jalen Hurts will have to be passing the ball a lot more. So I'd go over 21 and a half passing touchdowns for him. But I do want to say Dak Prescott last season, he led the NFL and touchdown passes, but he currently has the second highest passing touchdown prop right behind Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes is at 34 and a half, which is absolutely insane how high that is. Um, but again, between the two, I'm going to go with Jalen Hurts over 21 and a half passing touchdowns. 
All right, let's take it to the wide receivers. A.J. Brown or C.D. Lamb over 1,300 and a half receiving yards. They both have the same player prop. Um, despite me being an Eagles fan, I'm going to go with C.D. Lamb here. He absolutely went off last season. He had over 1,700 receiving yards on 135 receptions. He was the top target by a landslide. The next closest player was the tight end, Jake Ferguson. So they also lost Tony Pollard. So I do think the Dallas Cowboys, they're going to end up throwing the ball a ton this season. Plus Dak Prescott, I mean, he's in contract year. You know what I'm saying? So he's going to want to ball out. And C.D. Lamb, he's a great receiver, uh, despite me obviously hating Dallas because I do have shirts that say Dallas sucks but that's okay all right um last one here for better bet the dallas cowboys or the philadelphia eagles to win the super bowl now i'm sure you guys are going to think you know what aaron you're going to pick the eagles because it's your squad but i'm actually going to go with neither as the better bet here i don't think the eagles necessarily have the team to win the super bowl this year but i also don't think the dallas cowboys are ever going to get it done in the postseason with dak prescott under center as we've seen i mean there's more pressure on Dallas than there is on Philly just because Dallas, I mean, they haven't won a Super Bowl since 1996. That was the year I was born. It has been some time. Meanwhile, for the Philadelphia Eagles, it wasn't too long ago that we saw them hoisting that trophy. So I just think there's more pressure on the Dallas Cowboys, but I don't necessarily think they're going to get it done. I wouldn't be betting the Dallas Cowboys to win the NFC. I wouldn't be betting them to win the Super Bowl. For the Eagles, I could see them winning the NFC, but just the AFC is so stacked and it's been so for quite some time that there's just way too many good teams that I would rather play also an AFC team, you can bet that, to win the Super Bowl rather than an NFC team. So between the two, unfortunately, for the NFC, I don't think we're going to see them be able to pull off a Super Bowl win. Now, while we're at it, we might as well just rank the NFC East teams because I told you that I liked the Philadelphia Eagles to win it. We're going to go Eagles, Dallas, Washington Giants. And you can actually, if you want, deep dive into the ESPN bet markets and you can bet that exact order. Big long shot there. But even though, I mean, that's based on rankings as well, I just think that's the most likely scenario for one to four. But again, pending health and injuries. All right, let's also go over some week one lines that have been posted and available. Now, in terms of when you should bet these, it's always, of course, up to your discretion, but there's some things that we're gonna see throughout the next couple of months in terms of certain starting quarterbacks, et cetera, not necessarily in this division, but just overall some advice for betting into week one. We've already seen some line movement on some of these games as well, but the first game I wanna note is Philly laying a point and a half on the road. <laughs> And by on the road, they're going to be in Brazil against the Green Bay Packers Friday night. Um, let me tell you, Philly fans are not not happy about losing a home game for them to go to Brazil. But nonetheless, I do think Philly comes out hot. I would lay the point and a half. It's one of the plays that I've already put out that I said that I really like. The Packers are still a young team, and I think Philly, they should have a bad taste in their mouth after the way last season ended. The fans, the fans are not happy with the Philadelphia Eagles, but despite it being away from home and in Brazil, which is very random. Um, I would lay the point and a half with the Philadelphia Eagles. And then you have Dallas right now. They're laying a point on the road against Cleveland. So this line actually flip flopped. Um, I, my best bet in this game is going to be Dak Prescott to throw an interception. This is going to be the best bet of week one, most likely. But I just think that right now I wouldn't bet into the spread or in terms of the money line. Uh, Dallas absolutely struggled on the road last season. So I was really surprised to see this line flip. The one thing about the Cowboys, I mean, they went 8-0 at home, but they went 4-5 and on the road. Their four losses were to Arizona in week three. That was surprising. But then they lost to San Fran, Philly, Buffalo, Miami. I mean, you still have a really good Cleveland team. That defense is absolutely no joke. The offense should also be better. Plus, it's week one. You're not going to see as many injuries um, as you would see down the stretch. So Dak Prescott, a totally different player at home than he was on the road last season. So I wouldn't be surprised if they struggled week one. But the best bet is going to be Dak Prescott interception. You can't bet that yet. But as soon as it comes out, you guys know it's going to be my best bet um, of week one. Uh, moving on. So the New York Giants are a pick them against the Vikings. Don't really have a lean or a feel here. Uh, the Vikings are in rebuild mode as well at this point, and the Giants have just been so bad. I will say, though, two years ago, the Giants were the best team against the number, and we were loving them. Last year, not so much. Um, don't really have a play in that one. And right now, Washington's getting three and a half points versus the Bucks. Bucks are at home. Um, I'm more inclined to lay the three and a half right now with the Tampa Bay Bucks, but of course, you want the hook uh the hook being the 0.5 uh with the washington commanders if you're able to get it just because if this ends up being a really close game because the total is really low obviously you want that but again more inclined to lay the three and a half points for the tampa Bay buccaneers right now so those are the four games that we're seeing for the nfc east teams some of the plays that i like as well as some of the futures bets that i would be looking to place if you are interested again you can find all this stuff on espn bet you can also turn it tune into espn bet live throughout the entire summer we'll be talking all things football you gotta love football but thank you guys so much for tuning in to the ekd show i appreciate it don't forget to like rate comment subscribe 
anything that's positive.